So it goes like this. Bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, day is breaking in my soul. Let's, we'll do that again, we'll try it together, here we go. Bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, day is breaking in my soul. Rise up and hear your calling, rise up and hear your calling, rise up and hear your calling. Day is breaking in my soul. Oh, lift your voice to heaven, oh, lift your voice to heaven, oh, lift your voice to heaven. Day is breaking in my soul. Bright morning star arising. Morning stars arising, bright morning stars arising. Day is breaking in my soul. We'll dance and sing to sunrise, we'll dance and sing to sunrise, we'll dance and sing to sunrise. Day is breaking in my soul. We'll build this faith together, we'll build this faith together. Rising, morning stars are rising, bright morning stars are rising, day is a break in my soul. Bright morning stars are rising, bright morning stars are rising, bright morning stars are rising, day is a break in my soul. Day is a break in my soul. Breaking in my soul. Thank you, Matt, for that. Love those lyrics, love that song. Great way to start the evening together. Um, I'm Mark David. I'm the music director of Sanctuary Boston. I'm here with Julie Metcalf. Um, it's been so lucky to have join us on fiddle and mandolin and vocals and everything else. Uh, try to convince me to play some of these harmonicas I have sitting here tonight, but uh, I'm just using them as a, to prop up our music. Uh, oh, so we're gonna we're gonna sing a song um, from uh, from ye old uh, Unitarian Universalist hymnal, singing the living tradition, um, although it's um, perhaps a little bit peppier than the original. Um, it's called "Do You Hear," and it's um, it's a song about paying attention. <laughs> Uh, about paying attention to um, the voices that we have in ourselves and um, and uh, the things that are important, really, kind of a, a call to refocus uh, on what we know is important. Um, and I hope you'll sing it together with us. One, two, a one, two. <laughs> My friend, in the place where you stand, through the sky, through the land, do you hear, do you hear, in the heights, on the plain, in the vale, on the main, in the sun, in the rain, do you hear, do you hear, through the roar, through the rush, through the throng, through the crush, do you hear in the hush of your soul, of your soul? Hear the cry, fear won't still, hear the heart's call to will, hear a sigh, startling trill, in your soul, in your soul.
From the place where you stand To the outermost strand Do you hear, oh my friend Do you hear, do you hear All the dreams, all the dares The sighs, all the prayers They are yours, mine and theirs Do you hear, do you hear Hear the cry, fear won't still Hear the heart's call to will Hear a sigh, startling drill In your soul, in your soul Yes! Like so many hymns when Mark David plays them, I think that's how they should have always been done. Barbara, would you share a chalice lighting this evening? I would love to, and I love it when Mark David rocks out the old hymnal. It just makes my night. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. So um, now is a moment where we take a breath, particularly if a breath has eluded you all day, and I invite you to light a chalice or a candle or just take a moment and remember the light that each of us carries with us every day. You don't have to earn rest. 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 Lesson B. My name is Matt Meyer and I'm the Director of Community Life here at Sanctuary Boston, joined by uh, about a dozen other worship leaders in different ways. I won't name them all, but they're in that order of service. Thank you in particular to Mark David, our Director of Music for Sanctuary, who coordinates, not only plays, but coordinates the, quest, uh, the music. Uh, Sanctuary Boston is a community of vibrant worship, as, as you're already seeing, and of real connection. And we're going to be sharing worship with you tonight and also um, inviting you to connect in all different kinds of ways in the coming weeks and months uh, after this worship, including we're trying an experiment in connection this evening. We've been trying to think about how to do some experimenting with our breakout groups, our little social time after worship, after every service. And so tonight uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more, but we're gonna try to create separate rooms for people in the Boston area and people far from Boston, from other parts of the country as just the beginning of some experimentation in different kinds of cohorts and different ways of inviting you all into conversation and connection after worship. So more on that later. In the meantime, some of those logistics, we are recording the service this evening. So if you'd rather not have your face shared on YouTube later, you can always turn off your camera, although we certainly invite you to uh, keep the camera on if you're comfortable with that so we can see your faces and, and enjoy all your smiles and your singing uh, the view of you singing, even if we can't hear each other, it's still part of the joy. We definitely invite you to sing along with all the music today. Please, that's, that's, uh, that's a part of the experience, but do it in whatever way works for you. Uh, some folks just sit quietly. This might be a good time to have some tea or, or be still or to dance around your room. So whatever uh, moves the spirit for you, do it. This is the last service of our Blessed Motion worship series where we've been exploring how to find some sense of grounding even when it feels like the ground beneath you has been shifting, which is certainly the case for so many of us lately. And I'm just particularly excited that we're going to finish off this very special worship series with a very special guest giving our reflection tonight, Reverend Sarah Dendy Green. Would you wave, Sarah? So good to, to have you with us. Um, what else do we got? Oh, I wanted to say that um, our words of welcome and the chalice lighting are all being read this evening by facilitators for our small groups. We're going to share the small group sign up. We've got more small groups happening this fall than we ever have had before. There's a Tuesday group. There's a Thursday group. There's a spirituality for parents group, an anti-racism for white people group, and a feminism for men group. So 
Um, the four people doing our readings tonight are just four out of the 10 facilitators fostering that ongoing deeper connection, even when we're socially distanced. So thank you all for being a part of it. I'll also share more on that later. But for now, I invite uh, Ryan, Sarah, and Lucinda, three of our small group facilitators, to start us off with the words of welcome. And you all can read along at home, whichever phrases or fonts speak to you most. Whether you go to church on Sunday morning, or light candles on Friday nights, whether you've been hurt by religion, saved by it, or some of both, whether you're brand new to spiritual community, or a seasoned seeker. Whoever you are, whatever you are, wherever you are on your journey, we, we welcome, welcome you. you. Small groups at Sanctuary Boston gather together six to nine people to meet a number of times and have deep conversations that we don't always have space for in, our, in other places in our everyday lives. They provide this unique space for listening and being heard on topics that we may all experience in different ways. During my summer small group, our first topic was belonging, something that I felt was you know, welcoming and a really great place to start, but honestly, an idea that I was never really asked to explore beyond that surface level. Hearing other people share meaningful stories of when they felt belonging in a real way, or the times when we ached for it, but struggled to find that sense of belonging really deepened my understanding of that word in ways I could never have guessed would have happened beforehand while reading that sign up email for small groups. The topic of belonging is but one example of an idea that has been expanded in new ways for me because of the depth and authenticity with which my group members share their stories. Small groups bring out the value in deep listening where I can connect to similar stories, discover experiences very different from my own, and bring compassion to all who have shared, including myself. In a time when connection feels difficult or unstable, small groups, small groups have introduced me to a truly wonderful people um, and strengthened my own place in the Sanctuary Boston community. Um, I've done two small groups so far, both virtually, um, and plan on signing up for the next session in the fall. Um, if I'm lucky, maybe I'll meet you there. Thanks for sharing that, Mary. Uh, my name's Alex, and for a centering song today, we're going to be singing Blessed Motion, which is the name of the series we've been doing. And we have sung this once before, so you might also recognize it. It's one of those songs that has a few different parts, and they interweave, and so you can pick what part, what harmony you want to do. We're going to be singing it a lot for a while. Um, so you can listen for a bit, you can dance for a bit, you can sing the whole time, whatever feels good for you. I believed in solid ground until I saw the earth in motion in the winds of steady change. And in the ever-rolling ocean I believe in solid ground Until I saw the earth in motion the winds of steady change and in the ever rolling ocean I believe in solid ground until I saw the earth in motion in the winds of steady change
Sarah, are you there? It looks like you might have just froze as you were celebrating Alex's song. Are you there with us? Oh no. Okay, that was strange, but I'm here. Yeah, good. I, and I was just saying, have y'all been crying this whole month? Because that was just a whole thing. Thank you so much, Alex. That was so, um, to say the very least, nourishing in a way that I don't think has happened in a long time. So that's great. <laughs> um, I am Reverend Sarah. I'm calling in from Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. So in between Nashville, Tennessee and Huntsville, Alabama on my um, tiny little farm with my growing family. Um, and it's really good to be here with you. I see so many young people that I work with and that's always just incredible. Oh, there you are, Michael. I couldn't, sorry, I couldn't see your picture before, but there you are. It's so good to see you. Um, our reading today is an, um, an article from The Atlantic, and the title is Reading a Poem, 20 Strategies. This is just an excerpt. Here are 20 modest proposals for rethinking the act of reading a poem. Number one, dispel the notion that reading poetry is going to dramatically change your life. Number two, when you read a poem, especially a poem not meant to be a spoken word poem, always read it out loud. Number three, try to meet a poem on its terms, not yours. Number four, whether or not you are conscious of it, you are always looking for an excuse to stop reading a poem and move on to something entirely different. Number five, people will tell you that there are two types of poems, accessible poems, whose intent and meaning are easy to appreciate, and the obscure poem, whose intent and meaning are really difficult to appreciate. Number six, if you don't know a word, look it up or die. Number seven, a poem cannot be paraphrased. Number eight, a poem has no hidden meanings, only meanings you've not yet realized are right in front of you. Number nine, as hard as it sounds, separate the poet from the speaker of the poem. Number 10, when you come across something ironic, make sure that it's not simply the speaker's sarcasm or your own disbelief. Number 11, reading for pleasure implies that there's reading for displeasure or reading for pain. Number 12, a poem can feel like a locked safe in which the combination is hidden inside. Number 13, perform marginalia. Number 14, there is nothing really lost in reading a poem. Number 15, poetry depends on pattern and variation, even non-linear, non-narrative, anti-poetic poetry. Number 16, as your ability to read poems improve, so will your, your ability to read the news, novels, legal briefs, advertisements, etc. Number 17, reading poetry is not only about reading poetry. Number 18, the very best way to read a poem is perhaps to be young, intelligent, and slightly drunk. Number 19, someday when all your material possessions will seem to have shed their utility and just become obstacles to the toilet, poems will still hold their value. And number 20, reading a good poem doesn't give you something to talk about. It silences you. So I want to start off with a confession that hopefully will turn into a testimony if I do this right. But my confession, and this is going to seem ironic because y'all have been spending a whole month talking about paying attention. But my confession, the very vulnerable moment, is that I have been paying too much attention. 
<laughs> like I just have millions of dollars worth in attention to give. Like with the right protein smoothie for breakfast, I have infinite resources at my disposal. All the hours in the day with a little spinach and protein powder and a banana, I am just ready to like conquer the world. But that is the fallacy of privilege as Americans, as humans, as people who think that we um, have uh, some sort of inherent dominance over other people, other beings, the earth. It's part of the idea that we are in control, which is the idea that um, people in 2019 really liked. People in 2020, I think we're a little more savvy to the game. And not only do we think that we're in control, but we have to earn remaining in control or else someone will take over. The state, a parent or caregiver, someone will start telling us what to do. And then if we're not done earning that, we have to earn the ability to rest, to schedule time, to not pay attention, has to even be earned. Do you remember the first semester you really tried in school? Maybe it was middle school. Maybe it was the first semester of college or grad school. And do you remember reading every single thing? Remember like coming home and thinking, how am I going to read all of this? But you tried <laughs> and you like read it word for word and you even took copious notes all the time. Like someone was gonna ask you what page this information was on to, like the next day. I personally, I, don't, I think that period for me was very brief, luckily, because it's unreasonable and it's unsustainable. If you talk to anybody who's gotten through any type of school, they'll tell you, don't read everything. That's like the number one thing they'll tell you. And then, so, you know, as we get hip and savvy to the game of school or whatever it is, our new job, then we realize kind of like, we can chill, we can loosen our fists, we can like, okay, you can skim this part and then maybe I need to read this part and we relax and like the instructions of reading the poem, we, we look for the things that are important. We start to notice patterns uh, and we look for context clues. And that helps us find another rhythm that's like, okay, this is manageable, this is doable. But then a new thing happens. On one end of the spectrum, it might be a new teacher. Like the teacher that's just like notorious for like that really hard class that you actually think you have to read everything so that you start reading everything again. Or maybe um, in life, it's a traumatic event or events, a series of events that makes our hypervigilance kick in. And hypervigilance, my friends, is a trauma response to survive. Think about this, I mean, we don't have to harp on this year. However, excellent material for thinking about our trauma response of how we are caring for our bodies and our communities. And the tricky thing about it is that it's with the intention of surviving. So it's not a thing to throw all away, but it's hypervigilance nonetheless. Uh, and it's hard to sustain. So back to my confession of my personal experience of this, we are in a, a big wad of traumatic events. My parents live in Virginia and New Orleans. My closest friends are in an hour and a half away in Nashville. And living in a rural um, conservative area, I am just constantly um, discerning information and figuring out new ways to be in this community, as I'm sure you all are too, especially as 
we are here for longer and longer and longer. My kids are mostly home. So that's been an added thing to pay attention to. And I have been hyper vigilant. I have a daily schedule for all of my kids all the time to learn things like commas and things that I think we've discerned probably are not the most important things to like surviving the end of the world, but I have a plan and I'm trying to pay attention to everything all the time because this is, this is where my, my mind goes. It just, it's all gonna fall apart. I'm trying to remain in control because the alternative is so, so scary. But maybe as you figured out in this season, it is doing more harm than good to try to pay attention to everything. I've been relying on the myth that if I simply just know how to use my tools, then I can maximize my finite resources to feel infinite. But here's the antidote, connection and sharing the responsibility of paying attention, of pooling our collective resources to tend to what needs tending. Furthermore, all there is to do and the only check to write is to be open to the possibility of connection and the gift of sharing the load of paying attention. In the garden, there is a finite set of resources and yet it all still has to get done. There are pigs to feed. There's a lamb in my pasture right now that is being bottle fed four times a day. There's a sheep with worms. There's the, the garden. <laughs> That is kind of in disarray. They're the, I think I mentioned the pigs. There's so much to do. And then we only have two acres to do it on. And if you know a farmer, you know that there's always a need for a new tool. And then if your garden is meant to be a community garden or in some way engage in the community, you have to make time for that to connect with the community. You have to make time for teaching that young person how to grow that heirloom tomato. But then magically, being open to that possibility, then there is the connection, someone with whom to share the load. In all of our movements, there is so much to pay attention to. What's happening in Kenosha, what's happening on the Gulf Coast, in our rural communities without Wi-Fi access. That's just three of the millions of things to pay attention to. But we are connected. And when we're connected, we can be in this world and in this work for the long haul. So let's pool our resources to spend them and live into that deep and abiding abundance that comes from community and sharing and generosity. So that the things that we care about and that matter are given the attention and the material resources that they deserve. May it be so, friends. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing that message with all of us. Um, resonated, mm -hmm. <laughs> resonated on many levels. Um, so um, we're going to do a song now that's become a staple of uh, Sanctuary Boston, um, uh, Blessed Unrest by Zotopi. And um, uh, if you like this song, he has more. <laughs> it, just a lot of great music. and. Um, uh, the one verse that really called to me, um, as Sarah was just speaking, um, was verse two, uh, how can I change our course? Just a lonely voice. Wish I could lose myself in all the noise. But if we all would rise, a generation proud, then with a mighty song, we could turn this world around. This tension between awareness <laughs> and losing ourselves in all the noise. Uh, 
it's a it's a constant struggle and so i hope you will uh sing the song with us as we are on, in that struggle together to remind ourselves of what is truly worthy of our attention <laughs> I am waking up to find my world between the dying and being reborn. I see what is and I see what could be, can't close my eyes again. Back to sleep. So fill my days with blessed unrest and my nights with dreams of justice. Make me a vessel for the turning of the tide. Fill my days with blessed unrest and my nights with dreams of justice make me a vessel for the turning of the tide how can i change our course just a lonely voice Wish I could lose myself In all the noise But if we all would rise A generation proud Then with a mighty song We could turn this world so fill my days with blessed unrest and my nights with dreams of justice make me a vessel for the turning of the tide fill my days with blessed unrest and my nights with dreams of justice make me a vessel for the turning of the tide all behind and before me every child ancestors all behind and before me every child ancestors all behind and before me every child I bring the power of a long Unbroken line. So when our time is through, I want to know we did what we came to do for the future ones. So in our darkest days. May we all be strong and give our lives so light. May go on. Fill my days with blessed unrest and my nights with dreams of 
Thank you, Julie and Mark David. That was beautiful. My name is Chloe and I've been coming to Sanctuary Boston for about five years. I consider this my spiritual home. Because I love Sanctuary, I donate monthly to support its magical work, like the worship we're experiencing today. Sanctuary routinely shares its offering with organizations that do good work, work we admire and want to support. Today, we are sharing the offering with Soul Fire Farm. They are committed to ending racism and injustice in our food system. Soul Fire Farm is a black indigenous people of color centered community farm committed to enter, ending racism and injustice in the food system. They ra raise and distribute life-giving food as a means to end food apartheid. With deep reverence for the land and wisdom for their ancestors, they work to reclaim our collective right to belong to the earth and to have agency in the food system. They bring diverse communities together on this healing land to share skills in sustainable agriculture, natural buildings, spiritual activism, health and environmental justice. They are training the next generation of activist farmers and strengthening the movements for food sovereignty and community self-determination. We invite you to give gener as generously as you are able. As you can see on your screen, there's two main ways to give. Um, you can either go to our website, sanctuaryboston.org donate, and you can donate through PayPal. Um, and then a much easier way is just to grab your phone, pull up Venmo if you've got it, and send Sanctuary Boston a donation that way. Again, half our offering will be shared with Soul Fire Farm tonight. Thanks, guys.
love holding us. There is a love holding all that we love. There is a love holding all. We rest in this love. We arrive together this evening bringing all the joys and sorrows and a thousand other emotions carrying us, carried in our hearts. We arrive this evening bringing our whole complicated selves. We invite you to take a few minutes now to write down any sorrows that you're carrying that you'd like to share into the chat box. We recognize that as sorrows share, are shared, they are burdens lightened. Take a moment now. difficult times, times of chaos, times even of violence, we also gather together bringing joy, bringing joys large and small. We invite you now to share any joys that you're carrying in your heart in the chat box as joys shared are joys magnified together.
love holding us. There is a love holding all that we love. There is a love holding all. We rest in this love. I invite you to take a moment to breathe deeply. To be present in your body, to be present in this time, in this moment together. And I invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer. Spirit of life and love, spirit that is within each of us, every one of us, spirit that is between us and around us. Be with us as we are with each other this evening, bringing our whole complicated lives to intertwine them for a moment at least, together in song and melody, together in sound and silence. Spirit, be with us as we are with each other, grieving too much. Spirit, we arrive together scared for the chaos that is around us, a climate that is on fire, a so-called justice system that has been racist from beginning to end and brings too much violence too often to too many. For those of us worried for the stability of our day-to-day -day lives, our next meal, our next job, our next move, and those of us worried for the stability of the country around us, threatened in new ways and old. Be with us as we're with each other in fear, in grieving, in mourning, in seeking out a few moments of stillness, of breaths that go deep. Be with us, Spirit, as we are with each other, also in the joys and the gratitudes. They are all around us also. The joys and the gratitudes of new beginnings and new possibilities, new homes, new careers, new loved ones. Bless us as we are blessing each other with the connections we're finding, with the ways we're reaching out across the distance. Bless us as we're blessing each other on first days of preschool and last days of grad school, of seeking jobs or surviving jobs for the whole width and breadth and depth of it all. Spirit be with us as we are with each other in the joys and the sorrows, in the grieving and the celebrations. Be with us as we're with each other, connecting across the distance, intertwining our lives for a few moments at least. Be with us as we are with each other in the midst of it all. Amen and blessed be. I'm going to invite us to pour our voices and our energy into being sanctuary for ourselves and each other and into the blessed motion of this song. Make us aware we are a sanctuary, each made holy and loved right through with thanksgiving. We are a living sanctuary. A so where we are a sanctuary each made holy and loved right through with thanksgiving we are a living sanctuary
I'm just gonna keep this simple. We have so much information thrown at us, and it's hard to keep track. And I really, really, really want you to remember this charge. It's a couple of simple thoughts um, from the map from the NAP ministry. But Trisha, who is the brilliant black woman behind the NAP ministry, invites us into this. Let people love you as many as possible and let care be a refuge in a sea of scarcity. Ashe and amen. Thank you, Sarah. Well, for those of you that liked classic hymn at the beginning, this one's even more classic, Wake Now My Senses, and we're going to do all five verses because, boy, there are some great words in here. I was reading them over, and sometimes you need um, uh, uh, the right service and the right reflection to really make the words finally speak to you, even if you've sung them many times. And I found that um, as I was just looking at these words, so I, I hope you'll, you'll join us in, in singing them together. One, two. Mark, David, and Julie, thank you again for your music as always. Thank you other musicians, the dozen other worship leaders that came together uh, as you do for every worship gathering here and, and made this happen. And thank you, Reverend Sarah, for your message for us, for being with us, uh, and for all the good, good work you're doing. Our final ritual of the evening is the most sacred, well, at least the most common ritual of announcements. And we've got some particularly good ones because there's so many ways that sanctuary community members are uh, gifting each other 
connecting with each other and we want to let you know about some of them. First of all, this weekend, Labor Day weekend, Sanctuary is hosting a community picnic weekend in eight neighborhoods all over and around Boston. We're getting together in very small groups of three to five people to share a meal together, socially distanced. Um, so we're sharing the link for that in the chat box now. You can sign up for one close to you so that you won't need to take public transit, hopefully, or, or get in a car. Um, if you need help with any of those things, let us know. And there's also an online option as well if you want to just get together and have uh, a meal on Zoom and some conversation with each other. So please uh, join us for that. We're um, really excited to have this way to, um, to connect, to be outdoors together, uh, and to celebrate our community in uh, the physical world in addition to the online gatherings that we're doing. The next one, uh, I mentioned we're doing all kinds of small groups this fall. Small groups are six to nine people, Mary talked about it, that meet every other week. It's the same group meeting for seven sessions, and that just allows you to go deep into conversation, deep into sharing your stories in a way that we very rarely get to do in other places um, these days. And so it's a really special uh, way to connect with folks um, to, make, to make those connections. And we're also continuing to experiment with how to do these on Zoom and continue to foster that connection. So. I think it's gonna be a particularly beautiful set of, of small group gatherings this fall. And as I mentioned, we've got a regular Tuesday and Thursday group uh, as two different options, depending on what works for your timing. But we've also got a spirituality for parents and parents-to-be group that's gonna be meeting on Monday nights. We've got um, an anti-racism for white people group because white people, we got some work to do uh, to dismantle white supremacy. And this group is about sharing stories and tools and um, doing that work together. And similarly, we have a feminism for men group. Um, so please uh, check out that link, sign up for whichever of those uh, are of interest to you. And if you know someone that might be interested in that, someone looking for some ways to connect, to meet new people, or to just have a place to do that kind of spiritual practice of deep listening and real conversation about the things that matter, please pass the invite along. Uh, one other thing we just like to remind folks now and then that we have a mutual aid fund. So if this pandemic is hitting you in a particularly hard way financially these days, please reach out to us. We're sharing the email there. Send us a note and um, our mutual aid fund can, can offer some financial support for you. So if you're struggling these days with uh, the loss of a job or a big move or a health thing, we don't have a whole lot of money, but we got enough to... Um, to make some kind of contribution and please don't be shy about being in touch about it. Also just gonna share our um, you know, Facebook and email list. We wanna stay in touch with you. We wanna stay in conversation, letting you know about all these gatherings. You can be in the loop and be in conversation with us and know about upcoming worship services. Our next three services, September 16th, 30th, and then uh, October 7th, the third and fifth Sunday, uh, fifth Wednesday of September, and then first Wednesday of October are all going to be our next worship series with Alex Pham sharing one message, one Vespers service without a message, just readings and extra singing together, and then Elizabeth Wynn sharing at the third service on finding our way back home. You know, we've been, uh, a lot of us, stuck in our homes for a long time, but we're going to kind of look at what home really means, where we find it, and, um, and what it feels like to be, be home in a spiritual way, uh, not, just, not just stuck on Zoom. So uh, stay in the loop about that. And finally, you know that Sanctuary Community is a community of experimentation. So what we've done after every worship gathering for the last few months is send you all to breakout rooms to chat uh, with different folks. Those breakout rooms are always all assigned randomly because we can't really put specific people in specific rooms, but we're about to try an experiment. Are you ready? Are you ready to do this with us? Uh, we're gonna see how it goes. We're gonna put all the Boston area people in breakout rooms, and we're gonna invite all the folks not from the Boston area, those of you from the whole rest of the country or world or wherever you're joining us from, to decline the breakout room invitation that you're about to get and stay here in the main room to have a conversation with each other. We think these groups are likely to be a little bigger than we normally have. So we're gonna do 20 minutes together instead of 15 and give it a try. Are you ready? Ryan's gonna send us the breakout room invites. 
Boston people, you accept those invites. Non-Boston people, decline them and stay here in the main room. We're gonna have a cup, just a, a couple minutes of music to give you a chance to head off though, if you are not gonna join either of those gatherings. We're also to do some more dancing if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. <laughs>